For more on this, let's welcome the founder and CEO of the Accreditation Council for Medical Affairs, Dr. William Solomon. Dr. Solomon, I'm going to be honest, I have not heard about this drug, but it's apparently getting lots of attention from physicians as a non-opioid option for treating pain. So first and foremost, does it work? So in the clinical studies that were done, it seems to work pretty well um, in terms of its comparable efficacy versus placebo. What they did was they looked at patients after they've gotten either bunion removal or a tummy tuck. They looked at the their self-reported pain 48 hours after anesthesia wore off, and they did pretty well. Now, the pain score wasn't down to zero, but it was pretty effective. So if you think about for a lot of these patients that undergo surgery, uh, having a non-opioid option is nice. It's a big deal because, as you, as you mentioned at the outset, opioids are addictive. Opioids come with a lot of side effects. This is the first time in 20 years that we have a non-opioid option for patients. So it's a pretty big deal in, in the, in the uh, medical community. When opioids were introduced, we were all told they weren't addictive. That was a huge selling point. So you seem to be qualifying this drug that maybe it's it's pretty good it's not as good but is it also definitely not addictive that's a great question so in terms of the mechanism of action of this drug, it works in a different part of the body. It doesn't work on receptors in the brain, so it doesn't have that addictive potential. Um, it really is a new modality in terms of the mechanism of action. And look, I mean, the reality is pharmaceutical companies like Purdue, like others, push this idea that opioid drugs weren't addictive. And unfortunately, that was just really a factor of the, of the issue that pharmaceutical company practices and how they educate doctors weren't up to par. This is one of the reasons why I really push for accreditation and certification of pharmaceutical reps and other people that are going out and selling and educating the doctors. We need to have standards. But going back to this particular product, it is a different mechanism of action. Addictive potential is presumably low. Obviously, it's going to take you know a long time to find out ultimately in the real world population whether there's addictive potential or not. Well, it might be worth not having as great a pain pill if you know that you're not going to be hooked on it and wind up on heroin or fentanyl uh, after your surgery and your, and your prescription runs out. I want to ask you about RFK Jr. He's still waiting for confirmation from the Senate as our next health secretary. As a doctor, do you support him for that position? I do. I mean, look, theoretically, what RFK Jr. is trying to do, I think it's a good thing for, you know, the healthcare community when it comes to trying to hold the pharmaceutical industry more accountable, what he's trying to do in terms of food and the quality of uh, the food in the U.S. I think that's important, right? This is something that has to be looked at. We know that a lot of the uh, practices, again, in the pharmaceutical industry, in the food industry, need to be examined more closely. So I think, again, at a theoretical level, what he's trying to do is the right thing, and I, and I fully support it. Yeah, Big Pharma's gotten a lot of heat, and many people think well-deserved. Dr. Solomon, we appreciate your time. Thanks very much.